Wait, before we start, do you want a bundle of 30 printable Italian PDF cheat sheets? Teaching you words and phrases for conversations for free? Then click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get access. Hello everyone, welcome back to ItalianPod101.com. My name is Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. And in this video, we're going to talk about the dining etiquette in Italy. L'etichetta a tavola. L'etichetta a tavola. Etichetta, etiquette, is also what we use to talk about good manners. Le buone maniere. Buone maniere. A tavola at the dining table. So the dining etiquette. Everything goes back to the Galateo. Galateo is like the Bible in good manners. You may hear a lot, il Galateo dice, secondo il Galateo, so the Galateo says that, accordingly to the Galateo, or non è da Galateo, it's not from the Galateo, or it's not accordingly to the Galateo, blah 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 something. And what is Galateo? So it's a book, a book that dates back to 1558, so you see it has a long tradition. It was written by Giovanni della Casa and it was dedicated to Galeazzo. And you may say then why Galateo? <laughs> because Galatius, Galateus, is the way of saying to Galeazzo in Latin. Because Galeazzo was the guy who inspired Giovanni to write it. In fact, the full title is Galateo, ovvero de costumi. Costumi as costumes, habits, like how you're supposed to behave. In fact, inside the Galateo, you don't only find good manners for eating or at the dining table, but for life in general. <laughs> how to introduce yourself, how to walk, how to let people like go before you and stuff like that. But here we're focusing on what you need to do at the table and also what you need to expect on the table, like at a restaurant, for example, or if you're invited as a guest, or if you're the host, even more important. So let's see some rules. If you sit down, you want to avere il tovagliolo sulle gambe, il tovagliolo sulle gambe, so the napkin on your laps, only use it when you need to. Il cameriere serve il cliente alla sua sinistra, so the waiter serves the dishes, to the clients on his left, alla sua sinistra, while he takes plates away from the right. And of course, before serving the next dish, you want everyone to be finished with what they were eating. Quindi aspettare che tutti finiscano il piatto, to wait that everyone finishes the plate, like what they're eating. And how do you know that? Because maybe not everyone wants to eat it all. So you're supposed to put your cutlery on the plate accordingly to if you still want to eat that or if you're done. If you still want to eat some, you put the cutlery on the plate like this, so one on the right and one on the left, like you can still pick them up easily. While if you're done, you put both of them parallel on the right side of the plate. In that way, the waiter or whoever is serving you knows that you're done or that you're still eating. Also, even though you're supposed to find the fork on the left side and the knife on the right one, then when you use them, you actually switch them, right? Because you eat with, I mean, if you are <laughs> right-handed. Uh, but you want to cut with your knife on your right hand or anyway, the one you use the most, but only piece by piece. So it means that you don't cut the whole thing into pieces and then you eat them all, but you're supposed to cut one piece eat it, and then go on like that. So you savor the, the plate even more. So basically, you're never supposed to bring the coltello, the knife, to your mouth. Coltello, knife, forchetta, fork. Forchetta. Speaking of cutlery, you're supposed to have more than one fork and one knife, depending on how many pairs you're getting. Like if you have the entree, the main meal, and then the second one, so it's one forchetta and coltello per gli antipasti, una forchetta and coltello for the main, quindi per il primo, un coltello e forchetta per il secondo, so usually meat or fish, and then you also have the ones for the dessert, right? But those actually, even if you see them a lot of times on top, you see it in front of you basically like this, 
And that's not supposed to happen because they should come together with the dessert, not before. And that may be a forchetta or a piccolo cucchiaio, so un cucchiaino, a small spoon. Speaking of what you should put on the table, you should also have un bicchiere per l'acqua, so a glass for the water, but also un bicchiere per il vino, alla destra, on the right, of il bicchiere per l'acqua. So you have the glass water, then the wine water, and if you drink red and white, then you have to have two glasses, right? And you go on, on the right. And technically, you have the white wine next to the water and the red, while the red is the one on the side. Also, it's bad behavior, so maleducazione, because educazione in general is being well-behaved, so maleducazione is when you're not well-behaved, so it is bad behavior when you drink without making sure that the people next to you also have to drink. So you always have to check for the bicchiere degli ospiti. Bicchiere degli ospiti. Once everyone has to drink, then you can proceed with drinking, maybe even proposing a toast, but mind you that you're not supposed to actually touch the glasses. So the typical chin-chin that we all do, because this is the etiquette, but then you may see people doing it anyway. Um, so it's supposed to be noiseless. So you just say un brindisi agli sposi, for example, a toast to the groom and bride, agli sposi, but you just make like the idea, the gesture, you don't really touch glasses, even though, again, people do that. Something else that people do, even though technically you're not supposed to, is, for example, saying buon appetito. Buon appetito. When you start eating, you say have a good meal or enjoy your meal. Buon appetito. But accordingly to the Galateo, that's not good because you're basically forcing people to eat or anyway, you're wishing them to have more appetite than what they should. I think this comes from like old times. So nowadays, feel free to say buon appetito. Also, you're not really supposed to eat bread before you're served the main dish or in between courses. So that's also something that you're not supposed to do, but still people do that. Especially if they're really hungry, they have to eat something. So you just eat some bread. But what you have to do with the bread is not directly eat from that, like if you have a small panini, right? But to take just a piece of it and not with the knife, because that may be like dirty or anyway, it's yours. While you should do that with your hands, also because you're supposed to have clean hands. So it's fine. And actually it's the etiquette. If you're invited to someone's place to ask, where's the bathroom? So you can wash your hands before sitting at the table. Now, when you get the bread, actually in restaurants, you're supposed to put that in a small plate that you should have on the left. Not everyone has that. Also, definitely not at home. So it's fine if you just leave it on the table. But be careful not to turn the bread upside down because that's also bad luck. So you don't want to put il pane al contrario. But you want to spezzare il pane, to take just a piece of the pane. Speaking of bread, even though this is something that a lot of people do at home, not in restaurants, usually from what I see, but you're not supposed to, is do la scarpetta. The little shoe, that's what we call it. So you take the bread and you gather the sauce that you have left on your plate, like depending on what you ate. But anyway, you don't want to have anything going to waste, right? So you do get it with the bread and then you eat it all together. That's called la scarpetta, fare la scarpetta. And even though you may think that it's a good thing because you show that you really appreciated the food, actually that's not supposed to happen. You should restrain from that. I know it's such a waste and that's why people at home do what they want. <laughs> but if you're at a fancy dinner, yeah, maybe avoid that. Another thing that you're not technically supposed to do, but people do it anyway, is soffiare sul cibo. Like, also, of course, never, ever, ever cut the pasta. Questo è solo per i bambini. That's only for kids. And also helping yourself with the spoon. Like when you eat spaghetti... Mm -mm -mm. that's yeah a big no like you're not supposed to help yourself with the spoon with the fork blah 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 no 
Also, the fork, when you get spaghetti, should never be really, like, vertical on the plate, but always a bit tilt. But, yeah, I mean, these are general rules. Then everyone can do what they want. But dining etiquette says that you just have to use la forchetta per gli spaghetti. As you're not supposed to soffiare sul cibo, so to make noise, basically, you're also not supposed to make any noise when you eat the soup. So the thing... No. And also you should not do the cling cling when you use the spoon with your plate, like, you know, when you're trying to get everything from the bottom. But you can move the plate with your hand to help you spoon (laughs) what's inside. That's fine. But you're not supposed to make any noise. You're not supposed to put i gomiti sul tavolo. So your elbows should not go on the table, so you should not stay like this on the table. Another thing you may want to be careful with is when you pour wine or anything else from a bottle, you want to be you want to make sure that no drops falls and that's hard to do. You're supposed to twist the bottle at the end so that no drop falls, but also then don't make it like pour on people. It's a whole technique. So yeah, this may seem like a lot, (laughs) but actually they are just rules and you don't really have to think too much about it because what you find on the table you use, basically, and you always start from the side. So the most external part, that's the cutlery that you want to use, and then you move into the middle close to the plate. Fancy restaurants are going to kind of hint that to you anyway because they change the glass as well and they may bring a different wine for for example dessert and that also has a different glass so you're not the one supposed to figure things out you just enjoy your dinner my personal tip would be copy people that are with you (laughs) so you try not to be the first one but if you have to maybe yeah check the galateo here and there But also just enjoy, because eating is such a pleasure of life, especially if you're in Italy. So don't worry too much, just enjoy. You know that we like to move our hands a lot and anyway have fun, so we wouldn't mind too much, okay? Lastly, something that you should already know is you don't have cappuccino after your meal, okay? You just have a coffee, but I'm sure you know by now. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any specific questions, just let me know in the comments. And if you want to keep learning Italian in the fastest, easiest and most fun way possible, remember to click the link in the description, download our PDF lessons and sign up for your free lifetime account on italianpod101.com. I see you soon. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye. Now that you're finished with this lesson, don't forget, as a free bonus, you get over 30 conversation cheat sheets, but only if you sign up via the link in the description. You'll learn how to have flowing conversations and how to answer the most common questions. You can also print out these colorful cheat sheets to keep as physical study material. So don't miss out on this free gift. Click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get your PDF cheat sheets.